Hey guys, Mrs. Clothier here. How are you? I miss you all so much. I'm glad we get to do this and uh, kind of see each other a little bit through video. I've gotten to talk to some of you uh, through videos or phone calls, and I hope to get to talk to all of you by the end of this week. So I just wanted to say I miss you guys so much. You know you're my babies. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. And until then, we're going to do this online learning. So I'm going to start with a read aloud to you. We read a book earlier this year by Tiki and Rondé Barber. I found out how to say his correct name, Rondé Barber. Um, we read Teammates, and I didn't realize it was a whole series. So Miss V from sixth grade, sorry, I got a cat. <laughs> um, Miss V had another book from the brothers written by them. So I thought that would be a good book to read to you first. So I built, I had a little library in my apartment. Um, I kind of made a little book nook for us. So in order to get ready for our read aloud, why don't you go ahead, find a comfy place where I can read to you just like we would in the classroom in our book nook. Uh, maybe Oscar will join us. I don't know. This is uh, Oscar the Grouch here, my seven-year-old cat I just got the other day. Um, get a comfy place. I'm going to go move over to my book nook I created for my little babies, and I'll see you all in a few seconds, okay? Oh, hey guys, welcome back. I created a little book nook for us. Little trilogy of fairy tales. Little sign. Everything's backwards to me right now, but it should show up right. She says, hi guys, I miss you all so much. So I got us By My Brother's Side by Tiki and Rondé Barber. And I figure I'll read each page, hold it up to you, so just bear with me. Um, this is my first time doing it on camera, so let's start. Hope you're comfy. It was summertime at last. School was out and baseball season was in full swing. Once Tiki and Rondé finished their chores, they could play until dinner time. The twins rode their bikes all over town. So just before lunch, off they went, side by side, as was the case in pretty much everything that they did. Today, they wanted to show their friend Jason a new secret place to ride bikes, a large open lot where workers were building a store. And since it was Saturday, the workers were gone. Bet you can't, said Jason. Can too, Rondé shot back. Watch this, you guys. As Tiki and Jason watched, Rondé slowly rode his dirt bike up and along the steep edge. Whoa there. Rondé thought, easy does it. The bike zigged and zagged and bounced, but Rondé steadied himself and held on. See, said Rondé, now you try it if you're so good. Well, I'll show them, Tiki thought. He rode his bike to the far side of the huge dirt pile and he popped a wheelie. Then he started up the hill. He stood high on the pedals, pushing with all his might. The bike wheels spun wildly, spitting up dirt. Then the loose dirt on the hill's edge suddenly gave way. Tiki toppled sideways, over the handlebars, down, down, burnout. He lay there blinking. His head was reeling, but his knee hurt much more. Rondé and Jason dropped their bikes and ran up the hill. The boys leaned over Tiki. Rondé pointed. It's bleeding. Bad. I even see something white. I think it's the bone. Jason put his hand over his eyes. I don't want to look, he said. We'd better get your mom. Quick. In the doorway, Dr. Myers was whispering. He needs lots of rest, Mrs. Barber. Tiki called from his bed. Mom, I'm bored, bored. 
board. I bet your moms and grandmoms are say, can say that now too about you right now. Tiki's mother looked the doctor in the eye. What about his leg, doctor? Will he be able to run like Rondé and the other kids? For a moment, she remembered when the twins were born smaller than most babies and how the doctor at the hospital had told her to take special care of them. She had thought then, like now, that no matter what, the boys would always have each other. It's a serious injury, Dr. Myers answered. I'm not sure he will ever play sports again. Mrs. Barber glanced at her son. Please, let's not tell him anything like that, she said, as she and the doctor walked slowly toward the front of the house. On the way to the door, Rondé raced past them. Hi, Mom. Head into the boys' room. But when their mother returned to the boys' room, the twins were gone. She hurried to the back door. Tiki's crutch was on the kitchen floor. Their mother looked out the window and saw Rondé on the street tossing a baseball to his brother, who was hobbling and hopping on one leg, but still managing to catch and throw the ball. Inside, at once, both of you. Tiki groaned. Mom, there's an all-star baseball game tonight. The team needs me. Yeah, Mom, I haven't ever played without Tiki. He's the fastest guy we have. Can he even? No, she said firmly. Then she turned to Tiki. And as for you, Buster, Rondé will have to play for both of you. You're resting for as long as it takes. Rondé broke in. Don't give up, Tiki. I'll hit one out tonight for you and for me. Tiki glanced up. Really? Will you? Promise, Rondé said with a grin. For both of us. July was long and hot. Whenever Rondé would go out to play baseball, Tiki would say, Maybe I could just... Not today, Tiki's mother would reply. And he knew that she meant it. In the afternoon, Rondé and Tiki sat in their room talking brother to brother. The wall was filled with pictures. Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, Walter Payton. And above the dresser was a picture of the twins, smiling, holding a trophy. Rondé pointed to the photo. Remember that game? Do I ever... Tiki moved his raised leg to the other pillow. They loved to replay that special game in their minds. The County Super Bowl, Pee Wee Leaguers, the Cave Spring Vikings, their funny purple uniforms. Oh, I know some other kids that wear purple uniforms. Remember what Coach always said? Rondé's number 21 and Tiki is 22 because R comes before T and this is how I can tell you apart. Both boys burst out laughing. And remember that great big kid on the Browns, Tiki said? I thought he'd run over us like a truck. Me too. But the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Just ask Coach Mike. And the field. When I'd run for a long touchdown, I thought I'd never reach the goal line. But you did. And we stuck together. And we won. Remember the song they played over the loudspeaker afterward? Rondé asked him. We are the champions, Tiki said. I can still hear it. August was better, just a little bit. Baseball season was winding down, and for Tiki, it was still the longest summer he could remember. Rondé dug in at the plate. Tiki sat in the dugout with his legs stretched straight out, cheering on his brother. Rondé rode his bike. Tiki sat under a tree, waiting for his brother to come around the block one more time. Rondé practiced his sprints. Tiki watched, counting the weeks until football practice would begin. Rondé walked fast. Tiki limped behind. Come on, Tiki, you can do it. I know you can. We're supposed to meet Chris in five minutes. I'm trying. Wait up. You know I won't leave you behind. Tiki's mother would tell him stories about when the boys were very little and how the doctor had told her they shouldn't ever play too hard. You two were never the biggest for your age, but you always worked hard at what you loved. And look at you now. Their mother laughed, playing all the time. Look at him now, Tiki grumbled, pointing to Rondé. I'm sure I'll never run fast again. And football practice starts in two weeks. Their mother paused. 
Remember when you both tried out for the basketball team and didn't make it? You didn't quit then, did you? Tiki was silent. It's like I've always told you, believe in yourself and others will too, she said softly. Wait, wait and see. Finally, the doctor gave his orders. No more brace. Tiki bent his knee back and forth. Go slow, the doctor said. Take it easy. Let's go outside, Rondé whispered. Rondé took the old football out of the closet and passed it to his brother. It was the first football the twins had ever owned, a gift from their grandmother. It was rough now, scratched and worn, but it felt good in Tiki's hands. They hurried downstairs and outside to the parking lot. They warmed up, passing the ball back and forth. Go out, Rondé said. I'll hit you. Tiki moved gingerly on his stiff leg over the pavement. Rondé faded back, calling out, sounding like a sports announcer. Rondé Barber looks for a receiver. He spots his brother near the 10-yard line. A perfect spiral, bullseye, caught by Tiki Barber. Tiki called back to his brother in his own announcer's voice. He waved the football over his head as both boys shouted at the same time, Touchdown! Then September arrived. Tiki felt stronger and stronger. Football practice was every afternoon, even on the hottest days. But the boys didn't mind. They were teammates, together again. Before practice, Rhonda and Tiki sat under the bleachers with their notebooks spread out. Homework first, their mom always said. It's not hard if you do a little bit every day. Rondé worked on math, his favorite subject. Tiki read his history book. Sometimes he liked to dream of becoming an astronaut. Finally, a whistle sounded. The twins ran out with the others to the center of the green field. At practice, they always ran everywhere. One of Coach Mike's favorite sayings was, only two people were walk here, Coach Mike and the mailman. Everyone warmed up. Rondé jumped up and down. Tiki stretched his legs. His leg. So far, so good. Today, no one was wearing pads, and he felt so light on his feet. Yes, I can do it, Tiki told himself. The offensive team practiced running wide around the end. Tiki sprinted outside and tiptoed down the sideline. Again and again. But just before practice was over, racing back, he slipped and he fell. Rondé was there first, looking down with a frightened gaze. You all right? Tiki felt his leg. Okay, he said, smiling. Yeah, I'm okay. Rondé re reached out a hand and pulled his brother up. Together, they ran back to the huddle. After practice, they climbed to the top of the bleachers, waiting for their mom. Below them, the field was empty. Rondé looked down. Do you ever think of us playing in a big stadium, he asked Tiki, in front of a great big crowd? Really big? Yeah, Super Bowl, like that. That would be cool, Tiki said. Coach Mike says that if we, I know, I know, he told me, we have to keep working at it every day. Play our best. Know what I think? Rondé asked his brother. What? Tiki replied. Rondé grinned and held up his hand. Let's go for it. The twins high five just as they heard a car horn. They jumped down the wooden rows two at a time and raced to the car. What's up with you two? Their mom asked as they piled into the back seat. We were just talking about uh, about stuff. After about becoming really, really good football players, yeah, about even playing in the Super Bowl. Their mother smiled as she started the car. Well, she said, maybe if you work hard enough. Saturday morning, game time at last. The twin small faces stared out from underneath their helmets. Their mom was there, as always, watching, cheering. The boys looked up at their mother. Give it your best, she said. Don't forget, play proud. The opponents were going to kick off. The receiving team raced onto the field. Rondé and Tiki were further, furthest back, deep, 
side by side. And I know you're gonna ask which one is mom. So I'm gonna say the one we can see the best is probably mom. The kicker raised his hand. He moved forward with short steps. The football soared high in the air, end over end. Yours, Rondé called out as Tiki circled beneath it. Follow me, to the left, all the way. Tiki opened his arms and caught the ball. Play proud. He was racing now with Rondé just beside him, their feet flying over the grass. Tiki and Rondé, Rondé and Tiki, together, all the way, champions. Brothers, side by side. And there's their real pictures. So now that we've read teammates and by my brother's side, I want to know if you became famous for something. Tell someone in your family or a friend or someone you talked to on the phone. Send it to me. Who would you want by your side if the both of you could become famous for something? And what would you like to become best known for? Think about that today. Let me know. Feel free to send it to me. All your parents have my number. Um, I think you can comment on the videos too. And I will see you later this week. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you soon.